every time I see the sun, the rooster crows for day. It's a really close call, but I'm gonna have to give the win in the portability category to the MacBook Pro. But the biggest disappointment to me with the 2020-27 inch iMac is the battery life. <laughs> no, but I'm making a big upgrade to my setup. I have a new camera coming in and I want to make an upgrade to my editing setup as well. Maybe you saw my review video of the 16 inch MacBook Pro and you saw I wasn't completely satisfied. Now I've bought this iMac, but I don't know yet if it will bring me the speeds I'm looking for or not. A fantastic channel called Max Tech has made a lot of benchmarks, and most of what I'll share here today I learned from there, but my configuration is different from theirs. I got the lowest spec CPU, but the highest spec GPU for graphics. So I still don't know if this was a good idea or if it was a really bad idea that I can't bring home for evening work and with no practical speed boost. I'm CTO Larson, let's find out. Okay, so this has been my back office setup until now. Basically I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro connected to an external 4K display and then both screens open and I get quite a lot of real estate. The issues have really been too. Number one, the fans are on the whole time when connecting the external display and having this screen open as well. There is 140 pages of discussion and there is no resolution. Number two is performance for editing videos. I want to edit in 4K and I'm just not happy with the performance as it is now. So I want to see if this would bring a massive improvement or not. So let's bring up this one. Oh, there was something. Oh, keyboard, good sign, inning pad. And this should be the trackpad, I don't want mouse. There's a tiny switch here. And then clearly you get the USB type A to lightning cable. Why do they include that? Are the keyboards the same size? Yeah, pretty much. All right, it's time to enter dark mode. Okay, so we're pretty much set up here. And note here that I'm gonna have both the screens open at the same time. That could influence, especially the graphics tests. And do not buy the RAM from Apple. Okay, so here we have the RAM modules. You save seven to eight hundred dollars by buying the identical module yourself. Link below. Under the power cable, press this switch. Press outwards here. Pull out with both hands. Take note of both the slot position and where the notch is. Insert the new RAM module in the same slot and notch facing the same way. And close. The only difficult thing with this one was to put the lid back, but I got it. Now we can see we have 64 GB in two slots. I also tried separately to put four modules in all four slots for a total of 128 GB. Spoiler, it was pointless in this configuration. So back to two slots and 64 gigabytes. Okay guys, we're getting ready to run the tests. Okay, this is it guys. This is the test I've been waiting for. I will run the Premiere Pro export. I will export one of my real videos, the one called Free Tech. And uh, yeah, this is why I bought this computer. So I really, really, really hope that it will provide a substantial difference. We will start at zero and see how it goes. All right, guys, now I'm going to walk you through the results here. So my MacBook Pro first, it's a 2.3 gigahertz i9 with eight core. It has 64 GB RAM, pre-installed from Apple, of course, and it has the Radeon Pro 5500M, which has eight GB of DDR6 memory that transfers at 192 gigabytes per second 
with 24 cores or processing units. Then I will also compare it with Max again from this great channel Max Tech. He had a MacBook Pro 16 inch as well, but with a 2.4 gigahertz i9 8 core 32 GB RAM, Radeon Pro 5600M, which also has 8 GB of video memory, but a faster memory that runs at more than twice of the speed, 394 gigabytes per second, and has 40 cores. Then this is how my iMac came configured from Apple. I bought it, of course, with the 8 GB RAM configuration. It has then a 3.8 GHz i7 8 core processor. And with the biggest, baddest graphics card, the Radeon Pro 5700 XT with 16 GB of DDR6 RAM that runs at 384 GB per second and with 40 cores. So, in terms of transfer speed and cores, it's basically the same as this. 5600M that sits in the MacBook Pro 2020. Then I will compare it when installing two rows of memory, that's 64 GB of RAM, and when installing four rows of RAM for total 128 GB. I will also compare it with max low-end spec, which is then the combination of the lower CPU, same as I have here, but he has the lower end graphics, the Radeon Pro 5500 XT, which has 8 GB of RAM that transfers only at 224 gigabytes per second with 24 cores, which you see is very similar to the performance of my MacBook Pro. And then I'll also compare it with his high-end spec, which then has the i9 10-core processor and the same graphics card that I have. So this will be really, really interesting to see. I don't know how it will turn out. And here are the results, guys. This is very, very interesting. So if you take the single-core performance first, my MacBook Pro got a score of around 1100. My iMac got a little bit higher because it runs at higher clock speed, right? So that would be expected, 1250. And I got a little bit higher performance when installing more RAM here, actually. The numbers varied quite a lot. Then on the multi-core test, remember here we have eight cores. I got between 6,900, 7,100. First test with the eight gigabyte of RAM got 7,461. Then when I installed two rows of RAM, I got these results here, around 8,800. And as you see, it made actually no difference when I installed four rows of RAM instead of two rows of RAM. Max got a little bit higher score here on the lower end configuration. I don't know why that is. Could be that depends on what you have done before, because I noticed that the results vary quite a lot depending on probably the temperature when starting the test. And he got about 4% higher score when installing four rows, but that I did not see in my tests here. So probably that is only applicable if using the i9 10 core uh, configuration. So that's a good finding. There is no need to buy four rows of RAM for this configuration that I have here. Then moving on to the graphics tests, and here is really interesting. I got about 35,000 when stepping up to the 5600, Max got 43,000. I got 60,000 on one of the runs here, and that, my friends, is almost double the speed of the MacBook Pro that I have. So that is very promising. It is quite a bit higher than the uh, 5500 XT configuration on the iMac on, that Max tested. And you can see that that one is actually lower, or at least very similar to the newer MacBook Pro with the 5600. I also ran this test here to be able to compare it. You see the GFX Bench 5 Metal, the Aztec run off screen. It's the second test there if you, if you try to run this one. Yeah, I got 96 FPS on my MacBook. And on this new 5700 XT graphics, I got a whopping 192 or even up to 196 FPS, which is more than 100% improvement, so twice as fast as my MacBook Pro. I also ran this Puget Bench Photoshop tests. Opens and processes a lot of large files. I think a combination of memory handling, disk handling, CPU and GPU. On my MacBook Pro, I got a score of 722. 
with 8 GB on the iMac, I actually got lower score, 651. But when installing the RAM, I got 1050. And again, you can see that it made no difference at all whether I had two or four rows of RAM on this configuration. We will start at zero and see how it goes. All right, so estimate on the laptop it says 16 minutes, 10 seconds remaining. We move to the iMac. We have 11 minutes remaining. Back to laptop. 16 minutes. All right. Now let's check the CPU and GPU load on the iMac. And what we can see here is actually the CPU is not heavily loaded at all. While the graphics is, the GPU is using 100% all 16 GB of the memory and the processor is heavily loaded. So that means I think that we are actually taking advantage of the drastically faster graphics and I think we should get a massive difference in render times. All right, now let's check the same thing on the laptop. And here we pretty much see the same thing actually. The CPU is not heavily loaded while the memory is maxed out on the GPU and the processor as well. Okay, we're past 11 minutes and we're almost done here on the iMac. 12 minutes, one second left and we're done. So first lap finished on 12 minutes, 12 seconds on the iMac. We're still running on the laptop. It says five minutes left. All right, we're pretty close here on this side. We're approaching 19 minutes. And we're done. 19 minutes, 20 seconds. One thing I didn't fully consider is the resolution options. This is a 4K display. It means I can set it to 3840 times 2160. And I like this size. I can see everything both in Premiere Pro. Text is small, but I can still comfortably read it, no matter what I do. While on the iMac in this configuration, the text is a lot bigger. It's kind of too big. So I get a little less real estate, actually. I feel it, it is too big. You know, if you press Option while pressing Scaled here, I've selected this one, 3200 times 1800. I think the default is something like this. It's ridiculous. I don't know, some grandmom or something. So have you been using this one? And if taking the next one, it kind of gets ridiculous in the other direction. You can't do anything with this. And there's nothing between these two options. If anyone knows if you can add custom resolutions here, let me know. So yes, this brought the massive, massive improvement in speed that I was hoping for and I am so happy that I got it. Now what to do about this real estate resolution issue? I have an idea. Well, I shake that thing. Well, I shake that thing. Oh, hold on. Baby, just hold on. Into this absolutely ridiculous amount of real estate. I absolutely love it. And in Premiere Pro there is a feature where you can set the display to duplicate on another monitor. Like this. Then if I'm scrubbing through the footage here, as you can see then I can use a lot more space for the timeline. And whatever is showing here is going to display in a bigger version over there. That works in the source monitor too. Really great. And let's listen to the sound. You can't hear anything from the computer. It's just the cars passing by outside. It is completely, completely quiet. Yes! And the final test, the one that I really cared about, the Premiere Pro, we got this massive difference. Again, you can see that it didn't matter if I had two or four rows of RAM, 
but look at this improvement that is actually 58 percent faster which could be expected given that premiere pro was actually using the graphics for this export i am really really very happy with the setup fantastic apple thank you thank you very much please subscribe if you enjoyed this it doesn't matter so much for you but it matters a lot for me because of the content I will be able to make on this channel. Thank you very much and please comment your thoughts and reactions. Like the video. Thank you. Tack. See you later now. Hey up. Won't you hold on? I said baby just hold on.